articulate inside of it to create a, a three-dimensional mold, you know, a form that can support the soft clay. And the idea is that I'll use this soft form in order to end up with a, you know, really kind of soft, organic-looking form in the end. So I've stuffed pantyhose with vermiculite and I have that ready to go. And so now I'm just rolling out or throwing out at this point, rolling out the slab. too much thinner than that. Okay. I'm trying to make it a little more even. And the nice thing is if it breaks through, I can just patch it and smooth it over because the form will support it while I work with it that way. So it's a very forgiving kind of approach. Using the clay. And the clay is really soft right now. I think it's a very satisfying way to work with it for me personally. Mold form. I want to smooth it out a little bit to remove the canvas texture. I'm using a rubber rib just to smooth it down. Just to pretty much get the texture out. And now I'm going to turn it over because that's the smooth side. And I'm going to take it, wrap it. It's kind of like making a burrito. Think about that. Like a, uh, taking a burrito wrapper and making a burrito. I can tell right now that uh, I have too much clay, so I'm just going to eyeballing it, but cut off a little bit. There. And so now I'm going to take it and I'm going to shape it around the form. I want it to be kind of tight so that it'll hold it and support it really well. At this point I'm going to um, put this back here. So I'm going to score with a, just anything, some scratch marks, and then both sides where it connects, where the clay will overlap. And I see I have extra clay, I don't need this much clay here, so I'm going to cut that away. So I'm just forming it, you know, and cutting and shaping as I go. Shaping it around the soft form that I made with the painting hose. It, and now I'm going to just continue to roll it. I'm using the pressure, I'm using the table really to support it while I uh, put a little pressure on it to make sure that the connection is really good. And then I'll use my rib to smooth over that edge. Sometimes if the seam is still kind of obvious, I'll add a little extra foil of clay to really make sure the connection is good, but that's not necessary right now. And so now I'm just going to figure out how to wrap these ends and enclose this. So what I'm trying to do is enclose the form all the way around so that I have what looks kind of like a solid form. But how are you going to get the vermiculite out? So when I, um, after I enclose the form, I let it get leather hard so that it's stiff and it can hold the clay can hold the shape without. The uh -huh. And then I'll just cut a small hole in, in the clay and then poke a hole through the pantyhose and then drain the vermiculite out. That's the beauty of the vermiculite. It's in small, small particles. So you don't have to make a large hole to get the mold out. So I'll just pull it out. And um, here I'm just cutting darts. Just cutting the excess clay really away and cutting little triangular shaped pieces out so that it will fold kind of nicely and not be too bulky. Although, when I'm making these chromosome-like forms, I kind of like the bulkiness of the, uh, or the foldedness of the edges, because it sort of suits the form. And I, I did score, I needed to score and slip that a little bit, but the clay is so soft right now that it was okay. So I could smooth that as much or as little as I liked. 
just want to make sure that it's actually really well connected and really well covered. And that there are no, you know, pockets, no openings into the piece. You could paddle that in if you wanted it smooth? Uh -huh. I can paddle and shape it, and I probably will a little more, but what I'm trying to do right now is to get it so that it's um, enclosed entirely and that there's no air that can escape, because then it'll be more rigid and it'll uh, not collapse on me as I'm working. So, because right now it's still kind of floppy down here, and so I'm trying to get it to a state where it's um, going to hold the shape that I give it more easily without smushing because we are working with soft clay we've got to give the clay the support it needs to stay put and I'm cutting and just pinching away the excess pieces I can still see that there's extra clay there one extra piece so I'm going to give it a little bit of slip score it a little bit on both sides and then I'm going to fold it in And just smooth it over. So now I can do all the smoothing and paddling and smushing that I want because it's it's a it's pretty firm and it's supported. But the nice thing is that it has this soft kind of um, feeling to it. Um, I can also utilize the soft mold forming technique where I had some pantyhose and the vermiculite for this piece. I could it at this scale I could easily pinch. Two, four, two bowls and put them together. I might have done that too for these, but when you get bigger, the soft draping slab stuff works better. It can work just as well. This definitely had, I used the pantyhose and I surrounded it with the clay and then it was, it gave it a lot of shape and form so that I could then add and uh, press in and shape it the way that I wanted it to mold it. So it's, it's just a way, this the, it's a way to get the uh, support that you would have if you were making something out of clay solidly. You can carve, you can do almost anything to it that you would if it were solid, um, but you don't want it to be solid, so... Uh, so they're not that heavy. Right, so they're not that heavy, and because it's a, form, a solid form of clay like this might not survive the firing because it would likely to have uh, moisture and air trapped in it, and it would blow up. So you really can't hand build uh, clay forms solidly and then expect to fire them. If you're using an armature and you're going to let the clay dry out, you're using oil-based clay,